So now let's go for example two. In this example, we'll try to evaluate this integral here. This function uh, doesn't match any of those functions in that integration table. So we would like to try the u substitution method, u sub. So what would you like to let u to be? Well, so take a look at this part right here. This part here, you kind of wish it's a single variable. So then um, this function will be simplified. And also this expression here, the degree on x is four and which is one degree higher than this function outside here. So that actually gives you a hint to let u to be this. So we let u to be x to the four plus two, then du is going to be four x cubed dx. So when you differentiate the degree goes down by one and this exponent drop to the front. Now, when you do that, you see this x cubed dx that happened over here. Uh, which match with this x cubed dx here in that integral. So you know that you have made the right choice to let u equal to this. So when you let u equal to this, du is going to be over here, it's going to be one degree lower than that. So when you see this is one degree higher than this, so we'd like to let u to be this. Now by doing this, um, this integral is going to change to cosine, and this is u. So cosine u over here. And then what happened to this x cubed dx? x cubed dx is going to be this du over this 4. So du over 4. So we we'll have du over 4 here. Now this is going to become an integration with respect to u now. Now this 1 over 4 is a constant multiple. We put it in front. Now we'll have one four here and times this integral. Now we know how to find antiderivative of cosine of u with respect to u, which is it's going to be sine of u. So this is going to become one quarter sine u. And don't forget to press a constant right here. Now finally, because those when we start with these integrals, it's in terms of x. We want the result here to be expressed in terms of x. So we're going to return back to x. So now the u here is going to be substituted back by x to the 4 power plus 2. OK, now you can check this result and see if this is right. By differentiating this, and see if we get back to this function that you integrate with. Now you might wonder, how can I know which expression to choose to be u? Okay, so there are some idea I would like to mention to you. Number one, try to choose u to be some function in the integral. Um, the function that you integrated here is called integral, whose differential also occurs. So for example, um, the one that we just did over here. We choose u to be this x to the 4 plus 2. So the differential du is going to have this x cubed dx here. So the differential of this u will have this occur, and which happen in this integral. So when I choose u to be this, this also occur in this integral. So you know that you have made the right choice. The second idea is try to choose u to be some complicated part of the integral. Perhaps the inner function in the composite function. For example, uh, in this integral, um, this is the inner function or the square root function, right? So we want u to be this. And this is a complicated part here. And if it becomes a single variable, then it's less complicated, right? Okay, so that's the idea of how to choose u. Now take a look at this example three. We want to let u to be this inner function, 2x plus 1. Uh, the, if I have this to be a single variable, then this is going to be simplified. So I want u to be 2x plus 1. Now if u equal this, du, the derivative of 2x with respect to x is 2. So I will have 2 dx right here. So that will be 2 dx. The differential du is equal to the derivative of that times dx, the differential dx. Now this integral is going to become 
square the u, so this part is u. Uh, what happened to this dx here? Right? I can express this dx as du over 2. So that will be du over 2. Now you can bring this 1 half, this constant multiple in front of this integral. So we have 1 half here. Now to find antiagility, it's better that you we write this in our form. So this is u to the 1 half power. Okay, and then du. Now when you take antiagility, um, it's a reversal differentiation. So notice that uh, we will have this exponent on u, it's going to increase by one. So increase by one, and then times is reciprocal. The reciprocal of three half is two over three. Now don't forget to put plus a constant. Finally, you want to simplify this, and then you will get this. Okay. Now we change back to x. U is two x plus one. So we're going to replace this u by 2x plus 1. Now this is the final answer over here. Example 4. In this integral, um, what would you like to get u to be? Well, it looks like the complicated part is this part right here. So I would like to have u to be equal to this. Now if u is equal to this, du will be the derivative of this times dx. So the derivative of this is going to be negative 8x. So this is negative 8x dx. Now notice that this x dx also happen occur here in this integral. So you know you have made the right choice. x dx will be this du divided by negative 8. So you have that, okay. Now let's rewrite this integral. So this is going to become um, this is going to become one over square the u, and then x dx is negative one a du. You usually put this constant multiple in front, the negative one a in front. Now to rewrite this uh, in power form, so that is u to the negative one half power because the square is in the in the denominator. When you take anti t, the exponent on this u is going to increase by 1. So that is u to the 1 half power. And then we times the reciprocal of this exponent, which is 2. And don't forget to press a constant. And then you simplify that. And finally, we turn back to x. So u is, u is going to be one minus four x squared. So this is one minus four x squared. Example five, we try to find this integral. So if this is a single variable, we know how to find anti derivative, right? So let u equal to five x. So u equal five x. So du is five dx, which is the derivative of this times dx. Now this is gonna become e to the u so this part right here is e to the u, and then the dx over here, the dx is du over phi. So d over phi. So in this step, uh, we have expressed each uh, one of these in terms of u. Okay, u here and u here. Now the one fifth is a constant multiple. We put it in front. The anti of the e to the u with respect to u is e to the u itself. So we have that, and don't forget press a constant. Finally, we change back to x, u is equal to 5x. So that's the final answer here. Example six. In this integral, we have this part here is the complicated part that you kind of wish it is a single variable. So we let u to be that. Then du is going to be 2x dx. Now this integral, we don't just have x dx, we have x to the fifth dx. So we can have an x dx here, but we have to multiply this with x to the 4. So how can we take care of this x to the 4 over here? Well, so x to the 4, we want to express that in terms of u. So how can I relate x to the 4 with u? Now, u is related to x squared. 
So x to the four is the square of x squared. So we can relate them by using this. So first we express x squared as u minus one. After that, we're going to square that. x squared square is x to the four power. So that will give us a way to we write this expression uh, in terms of u. Okay. So by doing this, this becomes square root of u, it's right here. And this part right here is x squared and then squared times x dx. x squared is being expressed as u minus one. So it will be u minus one squared And then x dx is right here. x dx over here is going to be replaced by du over two. So, so we have we written this whole integral all in terms of u. Okay. So when you you substitution, this step here, it has to be all in terms of u. This original integral it was in terms of x. Then the next step will be all in terms of u. Now, one half here is a constant multiple, put it in front. Now you would like to multiply this out, expand them, so then you can integrate that term by term. So this is square root of u, and we expand this using the perfect square formula. And then you will multiply and distribute this term by term. So this will be u to the 5 half, and the time, uh, minus two u to the three half plus u to the one half. Notice that we like to write them in power form. That way, when we take anti duality, it's easier that way. Okay. So when you take anti duality, the exponent on u is going to increase by one, and then times the reciprocal of this exponent. And similarly for this, so we'll have exponent here increased by one times the reciprocal of this, so it's two fifth here, and then increase this exponent by one, so it'll be u to the three half, and then times the reciprocal of this exponent to the, and finally plus a constant. And then you will simplify um, this one half times that, the two cancel, so it'll give you one seven, and we would like to return this u back to x. So we want to go back to x here. So this will be, so we place all this u by one plus x squared. We have returned back to x here. Now example seven. In example seven, we try to find this integral of tangent of x with respect to x. Now you, Remember, the duality of tangent of x is secant square x. So this integral of tangent x is different from the duality of tangent x. Remember, integration and differentiation are with risk process. So certainly, do not confuse this with this formula over here. They're different. So today, we're going to find out what this integral is equal to. So first, we we write this tangent of x in terms of sine x and cosine x. Now, we'd like to let u to be cosine x here because du is going to be negative sine x dx. The duality of cosine x is negative sine x and then times the differential dx. So you see this sine x dx here occurs right here in, in this integral. So we know we have made the right choice, okay? So now this sine x dx over here, we can write it as negative du. So it's gonna be replaced by negative du. Now this cosine x is gonna be replaced by u. So this is going to be one over u. Now to find out that there will be one over u with respect to u, we know that it's ln of absolute value of u. 
Now, we want to return back to x. So, return back to x. We get negative ln of absolute value of cosine x. Now, notice this negative sign here is the same as negative 1 times this ln. So, the property of ln or other log function, when you have this exponent, um, you can drop this exponent in front, um, this b here in front, or you can also reverse this process and bring this b up as an exponent on this a. So in this example, we're going to bring this negative 1 back to this over here as an exponent of this absolute value of cosine x. The value here to the negative 1 exponent means reciprocal. So that is 1 over absolute value of cosine x. Now we know the reciprocal cosine is second, so this is the absolute value of second of x. Okay, and don't forget to press a constant here. So we have discovered today the antiderivative tangent of x is going to be, let's write it down, it's going to be ln of absolute value of secant of x plus a constant. So you see, this is the derivative for tangent of x. This is the antiderivative for tangent of x. So those are different. Um, but there's a pattern. Both of them, see the tangent and secant are always related, okay? The derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. The antiderivative of, the most general antiderivative of tangent x, it also has secant x in it, but it is ln of the absolute value of secant x plus c. Okay. 